Are you tired of the same old video games? Yes. Then you need Modern Warfare 3 for the Xbox Connect. A game so awesome, your head will explode. Yeah! Throw out your controller. Good riddance. Because you are the controller. You are the soldier. You are the battle. Oh, right there. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. I got time, I got time, I got time. The reticle's like right on the guy. Come on. I got time. Oh my god, he's gonna go. Oh! Hope you enjoyed that little intro. Today we will be working on the sniper scope tutorial. We will incorporate tips and tricks and techniques that I have uh, explained in my previous tutorials. So make sure you're good at those so we can quickly go through this one. There are other sniper scope iMovie tutorials out there. But I'm sure this one will be the best one that you will find, and I am not kidding. It took concepts from other tutorials I have found, as well as techniques I've invented on my own. So let's get started. As always, first let's go into iMovie, click on Preferences, under the General tab. Make sure to show Advanced Toolbox is checked. The Sniper Scope tutorial here is three easy steps. Step one is to actually film your movie. Step two is to add special effects. And step three is to add your desired sniper scope effect. There are two ways to do step three. I'm going to show both. One of them is a little easier than the other, but the second one gives you more options. So let's watch an example of step one, which is filming. Bang! Bang! So basically step one is to actually film what your sniper scope will see. As a director, you have to make sure everybody knows their cues. You have to decide who's going to be filming. If someone had a lot of caffeine, the camera might end up a little shaky. You might want to consider a tripod, a recoil of gun, camera sway, things like that. Take the film the direction that you visualize. If your camera has crosshairs, I recommend turning those on so you can have a precise sniper shot. So now let's add the special effect. If you remember from my other tutorial, we will be adding special effects that are furthest from the camera first and closest to the camera last. That tutorial is the multiple pictures and pictures in iMovie. So the special effect that is furthest from the camera in this case would be the blood hit. So let's grab our blood hit effect, put it in the correct spot, click picture in picture, maybe make it a little bigger, put it to the correct spot, and there we go. And we'll repeat this process for the other guy that got hit. But before we do that, let's add some video effects. These can be kind of handy for adding a nice sniper scope kind of feeling. Maybe you want roster for a nighttime effect, or maybe sci-fi, x-ray kind of mimics, thermal, but we can just ignore some of these for now. If you want to incorporate one of those, make sure you add the same special effect for the uh, blood hit as well, so you get camera consistency there. So let's watch a exported version now of step two. Bang! Bang! So that is the exported version of step 2. After you have your step 2 complete, re-import it into your event library, take it from your event library, and put it back into your project. And from here you can add a another video effect. So maybe you want to double up on the roster, maybe add sci-fi in roster, or heat wave things like that. So mix and match these, you can get some very interesting sniper scope uh, video effects there. Uh, the blood hit I have is pre-keyed already, it's from Action Essentials 2, so it doesn't come with a back background. If your special effect has a black background, there's a tutorial in the description below of how to remove black backgrounds. Under my camera settings while filming, I turned on the crosshairs 
so it gave my cameraman an easier time interpreting where the center of my video camera is for the better sniper shot hits. So now let's add that sniper scope. There are two ways to do this. One way is a little easier than the other, but the second one gives you more options. So what you want to do for the first way is go to open up Google, go to Google Images, click the advanced search bar, click in sniper scope, under file types, click PNG files, click search. After you search, you'll have a bunch of files like these. What PNG files are, are images that tend to have a clear background. So they will have no white when they are saved. So let me show you some examples here. The way I check these is I just hit the space bar while in finder mode on my Mac. So there you go, no background there, no background here, and no background here. So after you find a scope you like, you can put it into iMovie right away. If you want to customize it a little more, what I recommend doing is right click, open with, and click paintbrush and you can edit the crosshairs a little bit maybe you want a red dot in the middle some kind of triangle or something and then save as the PNG file once again once that is done drag your PNG file into iMovie and this time click picture in picture it'll appear up here so what I do to adjust the size is I drag it to the top right first, then grab the lower left corner and make it as big as possible without it going away. And that should be pretty good right there, at least for tutorial purposes. From here, it's going to come default with a Ken Burns effect. What that is, it's the if you're unfamiliar with the Ken Burns effect, it'll slowly grab the uh, the image from one side to the other. What we're going to do to get rid of that is click crop. If you click done, uh, that could also work as well. But crop gives you a little more options. So click crop and what we can do is shrink down the crop area. Maybe put it back in the middle right there. And as you can see, we have a larger sniper scope. So more uh, the video is visible. We can make it even bigger yet by making the crop box even smaller so now the sniper scope's even wider once we're done with that then we gotta change the duration to the correct length of time as the video so that way all of the video is under the sniper scope kind of effect you then export this and you're pretty much done so that's one way of doing a sniper scope effect I think it is a bit easier but let's do another one this one is a little more challenging, but it gives you more options. So what we're going to do is open up Paintbrush. It's a free program that you can get online somewhere. I don't remember where I got mine, but good luck searching for it. So open up Paintbrush. Change the pixel size to uh, pretty big. I go by 1280 by 800 or something like that. Click OK. And what we're going to do is make our sniper scope. So just start out with an oval. If you hold the shift button down, your oval will actually be a circle. And then you want to do your line tools. Make sure they're pretty thick because, uh, maybe not that thick, because if you don't make them thick enough, the iMovie will actually delete them later on. And once you complete that, make the center of it some kind of chroma key green make the outside all black and then save your image once that's done you should have something similar to this on this one I put a bit more effort into it and you can add cross hatches and other things like that to add some more realism for that but we just can't take this and put it into iMovie as is because if you do if you remember from my green screen tutorial you'll end up to, with some problems so what I recommend doing is opening up a new project and just call it you know green screen sniper scope and drag your JPEG into the into the timeline here change the duration of it to fit your needs 
it can't hurt to have a, a little extra longer. And as you remember from my green screen tutorial once again, you want to add one of these other visual effects. I recommend Vignet. And from here you can crop it. Make sure you click fit so it doesn't have that Ken Burns effect or crop or whatever. Just make sure it doesn't have that Ken Burns effect. And you make it to the size you want, things like that. Then you're going to export this video. Once it's exported, put it back into your event library. So here it is. And get back to your sniper video effect. Grab it, drag it in, click green screen, and it should come out nice and clear right there. Now, one other thing you can do to make your sniper scope a little more unique as well is maybe instead of Vignet you can pick film grain once that gets pre-keyed in iMovie it'll end up looking a little bit like there's a snowstorm or something going on so once again experiment around with these video effects you can end up with some cool ones make sure you just keep the green going you don't want to go with something like this otherwise iMovie will not know how to handle it so once your video is done you pretty much export it and show it off to your friends that hey I can snipe you now. So PNG route is easier there are also some cool ones out there like binoculars as well as PNG muzzle flashes or PNG blood hits so good luck with your Google searches I hope you get lucky. If you make a sniper scope video post it as a video response below to show off your work I love watching what you guys make. Thank you again so much for the subscriptions, more epic iMovie tutorials on the way, like the slow-mo bullet and more, as well as other video surprises, so stay updated. Thanks again, and I will leave you with some sniper scope outtakes where I did not hurt myself.